Welcome to Radio Veritas Asia News. This is Shirley Benedictos, and these are the headlines this week. Archbishops Leo and Poe elected to the Malaysia Singapore Brunei Bishops Conference leadership. Catholic and Protestant leaders seek to enhance collaboration to empower diverse social sectors. Catholic Church in India organized a peace rally for Manipur. Divine Word Priest discusses Timor Leste's human rights, inclusive progress at UN high level political forum. Radio Veritas Asia. The Voice of Asian Christianity Radio Veritas Asia Mobile App offers services in English and 21 Asian languages Download the Radio Veritas Asia app To get more videos from Radio Veritas Asia Comment, like and share Archbishops Leo and Poe elected to the Malaysia-Singapore-Brunei Bishops Conference leadership. Kuala Lumpur Archbishop Julian Leo has been elected president of the Catholic Bishops Conference of Malaysia-Singapore-Brunei or CBC-MSB and Kuching Archbishop Simon Poe has been elected president of the Catholic Bishops of Malaysia. Their election is the highlight of the 112th Plenary Assembly of the CBC MSB held in Majodi from July 9 to 14. Among the topics discussed were the recent translation of liturgical materials, the output of the Federation of Asian Bishops Conferences survey on synodal formation efforts at the diocesan and conference levels, and the feedback to the Universal Guidelines Framework sent out by the Commission on Safeguarding of Minors from Rome. The CBC MSB also decided to integrate CARIS into the Family, Laity, and Life Commission with only one bishop appointed president. Also presented in the Plenary Assembly was the renaming of the Commission on Caritas Malaysia to the Commission for Integral Human Development and the Commission on Ecumenism and Interfaith to the Commission on Ecumenism and Interreligious. Catholic and Protestant leaders seek to enhance collaboration to empower diverse social sectors. The leaders of the Indonesian Bishops' Conference, or KWI, and the Communion of Churches in Indonesia, or PGI, have announced their intention to further strengthen their already strong connection to help many different social sectors. The agreement was made during an audience on July 10 at the KWI office in the presence of the chairman of KWI, Bishop Antonius Subianto Bunjamin, OSC, and the general chairman of PGI, Pastor Gomar Gotom. The gathering of the church institutions provided an opportunity to discuss their mission in various social sectors, including empowering the people's economy, education, religion, digital media development, and young Christians' participation in national politics. The Communion of Churches in Indonesia is the largest organization of Christian churches in the country. It consists of more than 70 Protestant churches throughout the country. Catholic and Protestant leaders have made it a tradition to release a joint Christmas message every year. Catholic Church in India organized a peace rally for Manipur. The Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Calcutta held a peace rally for Manipur on July 16. The peaceful march commenced at Don Bosco School Park Circus in Kolkata and culminated at the statue of Mother Teresa on Park Street near Allen Park. Priests, religious nuns, brothers, and the lay faithful participated in the rally while praying and singing hymns while carrying placards, posters, and candles. Archbishop Thomas de Souza said, We want to show solidarity with the suffering people of Manipur. We pray for eternal peace for those who were killed in the brutal violence. 
Participants said they joined the rally because they were concerned about the ethnic violence in Manipur and feared that their communities could be the next target. Some are hoping that the peaceful march would send a message to the central government and find a solution to end the attacks. Since May 3, ethnic riots between the hill-dwelling Cookies and Impal Valley's majority Mites have killed at least 150 people while displacing thousands who are now living in relief camps. Divine Word Priest discusses Timor-Leste's human rights, inclusive progress at UN high-level political forum. Father Gregory Mintz, SVD, commended the progress in Timor-Leste and the accomplishments of its government in the past 20 years, but reminded them of the need to improve the protection of human rights. He raises these issues in his address to high-level political forum committee leaders, government representatives, and delegates from different civil society organizations in New York on July 18. He pointed out the recommendations of civil society groups on the issues of malnutrition and education among the young, gender equality, and peace. On education, Mintz said the groups also suggested promoting re-entry policies for out-of-school girls, developing a healthy environment curriculum, and zero tolerance for violence in schools. We strongly recommend to promote re-entry policies for dropout of school, school girls and develop healthy environment curriculum and to promote zero tolerance policy on violence in school and ensure investment to monitor the implementation, to develop reporting the referral mechanism system of sexual, for sexual harassment, discrimination, bullying and violence cases at school and provide counseling services. Mins also said the government should affirm the civil and human rights of LGBTQI persons in accordance with international human rights standards. The groups have asked the government to promote transparency and involve the public in peace decisions, equal rights and justice, and strong institutions. Formerly known as East Timor, the nation was a Portuguese colony from 1702 until 1975. It was also under Indonesian sovereignty from 1976 to 1999. As a missionary of the Divine Word, Father Mins, originally from India, has worked in Timor-Leste on social issues to assist the government and civil society organizations in improving the lives of its citizens. Thanks for watching Radio Veritas Asia News. Download the Radio Veritas Asia app for more Asian church news.